This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome back everybody. I have a bit of an interesting piece today. This little laminate dresser was given to me by a viewer some time ago, and this is gonna undergo quite the transformation. We're saying goodbye to the old top, hello to a new top, and hello to a color that I've never once ever painted a piece of furniture. There were lots of little repairs to make on this piece and some sprucing up. I'm gonna be pulling out the Posca markers again. This is gonna be a bit of an unusual piece. Stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. Okay, so as always, let's have a look at what we're starting with here. At first glance, this piece is extremely rough, and at second glance, this piece is extremely rough. This is a really good look at what a laminate top normally looks like. Sometimes you'll get a printed faux wood going over solid wood, which you'll see here on the drawers in a minute, but most of the time, the top and side panels especially are this faux wood grain over top of what we call here uh, masonite or hardboard. Basically just layers and layers of glued and compressed fibers. The frame of pieces like this are often solid wood, if you look at the drawer construction here, you can see that it is all wood. Let me just say, dovetails aren't always an indicator of quality, although a lot of quality pieces have dovetails, if that makes sense. Looking at the inside, the framing is all solid wood, but you can see clearly here where the top and side panels are just that hardboard glued to the wood frame, and then the back panel is stapled on. There are solid wood drawer runners, solid wood legs, and like I said, the drawers themselves are solid wood. This one is a little bit interesting. I'm not sure what happened here. If they had a cord or something sticking out, or maybe they tried to put a lock in, but I can move this plug, so I'm gonna need to deal with that. As always, I start by taking out the drawers and having a look at them, making sure there's no damage or repairs. And there were a couple of these plastic guides that needed to be replaced. Not a big deal. They're pretty cheap from a hardware store. It's quite dirty inside, dusty, and just needs some TLC, so I spend about 10 minutes vacuuming here with this little brush, which helps get into all of the grooves and cracks that the vacuum might not be able to reach. Once the inside was clean, I flipped this piece upside down, making sure I dust the bottom, and then remove the legs and the leg assembly. Now, these legs, like I said, are solid wood, but the caps are not real brass. I do fairly often get angry comments from people asking why I don't polish the caps, why do I ruin them by spray painting them, and this is the reason. Most of the time they're not solid brass, they're plated, and you can actually see here the plating is lifting right off of these. These can't be saved, they have to be either replated, which I can't do, or painted. Once I have everything vacuumed up, I'm gonna go ahead with some Zep Heavy Duty degreasing cleaner and clean the outside. I am gonna be painting part of this. So I need to make sure there's no waxes or dirt and I can see here that this side panel is also loose so I'll have to re-glue that. This top is toast and it's gonna go. You've seen me sand down tops like this before and reseal them so that they can be painted. In this case, I just want a whole new top. This one's really bad. You can see how easily that just popped off. It wasn't really hanging on by much. Here's a better look at that hardboard or masonite panel. Now to a beginner, this may look like wood grain, <laughs> but if I compare the wood grain on this laminate panel to real wood grain, you can see there's quite a difference. So the laminate panel, yes, they sort of mimic the pores and tones of the wood, but when you look at the real one, there's just, there's a depth there that you're just missing with these laminate faux finishes. I went back and forth several times about what sort of top I was going to put over this, and I considered real wood, and I ended up opting for a quarter inch plywood. I knew that I'd be painting part of the top, and I'm trying to keep my costs down on some of these cheaper pieces. 
In regards to the drawer pulls, I have used these exact pulls in other pieces. It's not my favorite shape or design, but they are unique to the era, so I will be keeping these in this case. These were also plated and you can see that it's starting to wear away, so these will be painted to match the caps on the feet. So in addition to removing the laminate finish from the outside of the drawer, which is that same faux wood grain, I'm also going to be sanding the whole drawer down, so the insides, the sides. It's quite dingy and there's some gouges, so it's just going to help really clean this piece up. So I'm just going to show you here as I'm pulling this off, you can start to see the actual construction of the drawer face. So these are three separate pieces of wood glued together and then cut in shape to make the drawer front. I'm not entirely sure what type of wood this is yet. I'm thinking maybe like a birch or a beech or something in that family. I'm not that good with the pale woods, but I'm going to keep cleaning these up and see what we end up with. You know what really grinds my gears? <laughs> when they staple these on, just use screws. It's the proper way to do it. I feel like the stapling is just lazy. And actually there were a few drawers where they stapled it on crooked, so I'm gonna have to fix those with screws. I think this is wallpaper in the drawers. It was quite dry and brittle. I was going to try to dampen it and just scrape it off with a putty knife, but honestly, because it was so brittle, it just scraped off pretty easily. Most of the drawers took me maybe 25 to 30 minutes to completely get this wallpaper off and sand down. Not too bad, but then there's that one drawer where I have to address whatever happened there with this plug. Now this plug is actually oak and the drawers are not oak, so the wood here is going to be a little bit darker. That's okay considering what I'm planning to do with these drawers. Plus it was already cut for the hole, so I just added some wood glue and I'm going to tap this down until it's just slightly proud of the surface of the drawer. I'm going to wipe off any of the glue that has spilled out from the edge here, put a little bit of wood filler in there, let everything dry, and then when I do my next round of sanding, I'll sand everything smooth. So I'm getting ready to sand down the legs and because these metal caps were so rough I just decided to sand those right along with them. They're going to end up getting painted anyway. And I do believe I used a 180 grit sand pad for this. This side panel had come loose, so I need to find the point where it is attached and start gluing from there. You can see this whole side had lifted. If I was so inclined, I could pull this panel off and put either a wood veneer or solid wood or a piece of plywood or something there and kind of, in a way, turn this laminate dresser into something that's made of all wood. But because I'm gonna be painting a portion of this, it's totally fine that this side is laminate. These are the leg brackets and they're super rusty and even though no one's going to see them, I can't stand leaving it like this. So I grabbed my rotary tool and I got a little bit of the way through one and the chuck in this, which is the little piece that holds all the attachments, it's been going for a while and it decided to poop out on me in the middle of this. So I had to run up the street to the hardware store and I got this little battery powered one. It's not nearly as powerful, but it got the job done for today. I'll eventually replace the, the bigger one when I can. I also opted to clean up the screws a little bit. These aren't going to be perfect, but I am going to spray paint them and the rust will be mostly gone and it'll look a million times better. Finally, time to start scuff sanding the laminate for painting. And I need to remove what's left on this top frame because I need to be able to glue my new top down and I can't glue it to the old laminate fibers. Once I have everything scuff sanded, I'm going to go ahead and spray with a clear primer. And the moment you've been waiting for, the mystery color, 
I have never once painted a piece of furniture purple in my life, and this is a version of purple. Unfortunately, this color is no longer available, at least to my knowledge, but I've had this on my shelf for well over two years, and it's time to finally use it. It's definitely not that I don't like purple, but because I normally flip to sell, I need colors that are gonna sell really quickly because I don't have a lot of space to store things. So purple will only appeal to certain people, but I thought this would be a fun project to experiment with. Now, my plan for this piece changed several times throughout this process, which is pretty typical for me. I've had this piece of plywood for a little while. It's not great quality, but that's okay because I was going to paint it. And the reason I'm able to glue this down versus gluing solid wood down, solid wood with temperature and humidity will expand and it only expands widthwise. It doesn't expand lengthwise. The frame pieces are small enough that they're not really gonna move very much and plywood is a very stable product, which is why a lot of cabinet makers use it. They're very stable and I have no problem gluing this down. going to very carefully set this in place making sure it's square on all edges and just sort of move it around a little bit you can actually feel it sort of grip as you do that I don't have anything super heavy in the shop except for a million paint cans so I'm just adding some weight while I clamp this down and then this is the final clamp down <laughs> A little trick I picked up with wrapping tape around things that are tapered like this is you just apply a small bit, tear it off, and then reapply, and you can keep it tight against the foot cap here. If you were to just wrap it around, you'll see here when I go to add the second piece, it doesn't stay straight, it kind of tapers down, obviously. <laughs> so it's just a little trick. So I need these leg caps to match this Posca marker as closely as possible, and this is the paint that I am opting to use. It's a little bit hard to find. I happened to buy a bunch of it a long time ago, so I still have a bit of it, but I know that production was pretty slow there for a while. So here's what I'm working with after the new top is on, and I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I don't mind the purple, but it's just, it's too much wood and I don't like the little gaps in between the wood. So yeah, <laughs> here's what I'm thinking. I don't know what I'm thinking. I think I've lost my mind. If anything, these little laminate pieces are really good for experimenting on. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out at this point while I'm filming it. At this point, while I'm voicing it, I know how it's going to turn out, and oh my gosh, it was a roller coaster. So initially, my plan was to stain all of the wood, but I just don't think it's going to look great. It's not going to it's not going to be what I sort of initially envisioned. So with these markings that I've drawn, there's going to be sections of the wood that will be painted the same purple, which I think will offset the gold hardware, which is I'm cool with that. And then there will be other sections which I'm going to stain. Now staining is going to be an issue for sure with this top. It's a B grade plywood. It's not normally meant for staining. It's usually made for construction or subfloors or painting. But I'm gonna try. <laughs> so I'm using a pre-stain conditioner for sure anytime I'm dealing with wood like this. You can actually see there on the left that very light section. That's the sap wood and you can see just it just sucks up that liquid like crazy. So if I were to put a stain directly on this without using the wood conditioner first, it would just be super super dark there. And it may still end up being super dark, I don't know at this point.
Once I have all of the areas that I'm going to be staining conditioned and it's ready for stain, I'm going to go ahead using a Minwax stain. The color is English chestnut and uh, I was a bit disappointed immediately. It's more brown than I wanted. I wanted a little bit more red. There's these weird marks in the wood that didn't show up at all while I was sanding. Here's the best part. Why does my dresser look like a cow? It looks like a cowhide rug. Right now, as I'm pulling the tape off, it's such a porous wood that it just sucked all of the stain underneath the tape and yeah, disaster. It looks absolutely terrible. So I added the first coat of purple anyway, and now I'm gonna see if I can figure out a better color for the stain. I used just a bit of cherry toner, which is definitely a little bit better, but still not quite what I'm looking for. So what I ended up doing on the dresser is I sealed the wood parts with Mohawk vinyl sealant. Once that was dry, I went in with the cherry toner on the wood parts there. And then once the toner was done, I went over it with three coats of Mohawk pre-catalyzed lacquer. I went back in and did my second and third coats of the purple, and here's where we are now. But my friends is the look of what did I just do. So breaking this down, there are so many things I would do differently with this piece. I would have brought the wood down in between the drawers and the patterns on the bottom I would have brought down onto the bottom board, much like I went up over the top with the wood pattern. This is all a huge experiment. I had no idea at this point what this was going to turn out to look like. It just seemed to be getting worse and worse in my mind, but you know what? These little pieces are really fun to experiment on and I do so many restorations and, you know, try to make things look very classic that it's fun to just sort of <laughs> go crazy once in a while and I'm pretty sure I did. Even though at this point I really wanted to throw this out on the curb, this hopefully is where things are going to turn around a little bit. My plan is to use these gold Posca paint pens to draw a bit of an abstract design both on the paint and the stained portions of this piece. I'm invested and I've come this far so I have to see this through whether it ends up being a modern masterpiece or a total disaster. I didn't really have a set design or idea in terms of the artwork on this. I just wanted it to be sort of loose and whimsical. I think had I planned it out, I could have had something a bit more balanced and something I would have been overall more happy with. But it is what it is. I'm hoping that someone would love this for their kids room or a fantasy bookstore or, you know, there's a lot of applications for something like this. Believe it or not. Well, the time has come to look back at where we started. It still remains to be seen whether this piece that I recreated is a hit or a miss, and I know that will vary between people for sure, but considering what this started out as, I thought that this was a really good piece to sort of experiment on, and hopefully I can sell this to somebody who wants something completely one of a kind and unique. But more importantly, this little piece is in much better shape than it was when I got it, and that's the whole point here. As always, thank you so much for watching. This video was uploaded on Halloween 2022, so let me know if this is a trick or a treat. There's a little update on my website at the end of the reveal, so stick around for that, and I will see you next time.
In the last video, I talked to you about how I was starting to put together a website using Squarespace. Squarespace is extremely easy to navigate, and even though I have a little bit of a background in building websites, like HTML from back in the 90s websites, I really appreciate how streamlined this is. They have powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts. And you can extend Squarespace's already powerful e-commerce capabilities with Squarespace extensions. If you've been thinking about building a website, whether it's a really basic one for your cat or something really expansive for your business, you can go to squarespace.com for a free trial and build your site completely. And then when you're ready to launch your site, you can go to squarespace.com slash transcend furniture to save yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 